Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew. And I'm Cassie. And you're listening to Cubes. Hey there, everyone. We have a catchword episode planned for you today. If you don't know what catchword is, well, let me explain. It is the Culips vocabulary series where we teach you the English idioms, vocabulary, phrasal verbs, proverbs, all of these different types of vocabulary that you need to understand English. And we hope that by studying with this series, the world of English will become unlocked and you will be able to understand what native speakers say and understand your favorite song lyrics and movies, all of these sorts of things. Today, I am joined by my co-host, Cassie. Cassie, hello. Hello. How are you doing, Cassie? Is your day all right so far? Yeah, it's going well. It's extremely windy, but no complaints. Yeah, it's a really windy day here today, isn't it? The sky is a beautiful blue color, not a cloud in the sky, but it's like a frigid Arctic blizzard out there with all of the wind. It's been so windy all week. Actually, I was out running the other day mm -hmm. and I always wear a hat when I run to protect me from the sun. And like you say, it's a beautiful sunny day. It's been really sunny, but windy and my hat blew off my head and hit an old man that was walking. <laughs> so I, I felt bad about that. Didn't mean to hit him with my hat, but it happened. I didn't injure him at least. Oh, that's good. It almost feels like last week, you know, Earth gave us a little taste of summer and then decided, nope, that's not for you. And then brought back <laughs> the freezing spring. For listeners who are listening to this in the future, it is around the end of April right now. So it's just in that transition time where sometimes the weather is really hot. Sometimes it's still frigid, but we should enjoy it while it lasts, Cassie, because pretty soon it is going to be super, super hot when the summer comes around. That's true. Anyways, guys, we're not here to talk about the weather today. We are here to talk about some interesting English vocabulary. And today's episode topic was... Uh, another suggestion from our listener from Russia, Vera. And Vera wrote us recently to say that she enjoys listening to Culips and that she wants to know what the word ending ish means, ish, which is spelt I-S-H. So she asked, ish, what does it mean? How and when can we use it? You know, when someone says something like, well, the weather is normal-ish. Okay. Wow. Cassie, maybe we are talking more about the weather today. <laughs> you stand corrected. I stand corrected. Yes. So thank you for the question, Vera. That is a great episode suggestion because it's true that native speakers do use this suffix, this word ending, ish, all the time. I think I use it Probably every day. Me too. What about you, Cassie? You too? Every single day, for a fact. Okay. And there are different ways that we can use it. We use it in different contexts to mean different things. And there are four different ways, in fact, that we can use it. And that is what we are going to look at today. We're going to take a close look at the ish ending and the different ways that native speakers use this. But before we do that, guys, I want to let you know that you can download the study guide for this episode from our website, qlips.com. It is the best way to study with us, and it is jam-packed with materials that we have developed to help you get the most out of today's lesson. And to download it, just visit qlips.com. All right, Cassie, so I thought we should start with the easiest way that we can use this expression and then progress in difficulty as we go along. I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah, let's start easy. So the first way that we can use ish is to describe colors, to describe colors. Do you want to maybe give an example of that, Cassie? 
Yeah. When using ish to describe colors, you're talking about something that when you look at it, it might not be exactly that color, but, you know, reminds you of that color. For example, I use this a lot when talking about people's eye colors. Like, you look at someone and you say, wow, your eyes are brown, but they're also a little bit greenish. That's unique. When it's kind of in between a color, right? If we said、mm-hmm. something was greenish, then maybe it's a little bit green, but a little bit yellow. And it's not a pure representation of a typical green color. Then we could say it's greenish. Or, you know, we also use this、uh, as an adjective to describe other colors. So I could say, oh, it's a yellowish orange. So that means it's orange color that has a kind of yellow quality to it. It's a yellowish orange. Or like a bluish purple. It's not a bright purple, it's more of a dark, bluey purple, bluish purple. Right, exactly. So, everyone, what we are going to do here, instead of having some dialogue examples, we're going to give you some example sentences. And we hope that. You can follow along with us and actually practice doing some English speaking today. So, we're going to give you the opportunity to listen to us and to repeat what you hear. We're going to give you three example sentences using ish to describe colors, and we would like you to repeat after us. I will read the example first, and then Cassie will say it, and then it's your turn. We'll give you some. Blank airspace for you to repeat what you've heard. So here we go with the first example sentence. That sweater is a greenish color. That sweater is a greenish color. It's hard to talk about colors on a podcast, Cassie, but when I think of greenish, I think of a combination of green and maybe. Brown? It's kind of like a dark green in between green and brown. Kind of green. That's all you need to know, guys, is that when we apply ish to a color, it means it's not a pure representative of that color. It's like a mixture with a different color. Okay, let's listen to the next example. My car is pretty ugly. It's like a reddish brown color. My car is pretty ugly. It's like a reddish brown color. Okay, so here we hear reddish to describe brown. Now we know that the color of the car is brown, but it has some red qualities to it. So, yeah, I could imagine that's a pretty ugly car. <laughs> yeah, the reason why is if you think reddish and brown, you think of rust, which is that crusty reddish brown. Crud you get on your car when you let it sit in the rain or it gets too old. Yeah, when the metal starts to deteriorate and break down, you get yeah. rust. Yeah. Not pretty. Let's listen to the final example sentence. Look at the sunset. The sky is all pinkish and purple. <sighs> Look at the sunset. The sky is all pinkish and purple. Okay, so the sky is all pinkish. You know, if you can imagine the sunset and the sky, you have a lot of different colors, and sometimes the sky is pinkish, right? It's not all pink, but it has some pink elements, some pink qualities to it. It's very beautiful. Colors are kind of swirled together. You don't know where one color starts and one color ends, they're all just mixed and they become one big. Ish, pinkish, purplish. Pinkish, purplish. Beautiful. All right. So let's take a look now at the second way that English speakers use ish. And I gotta say, I think this one is maybe the most common, Cassie. Yeah, this is the one I use the most. Okay. And so that is that we apply ish to a time or to an age. When we are talking 
approximately, right? So we're not exactly sure mm -hmm. of the exact age that someone is, or we're not exactly sure of the exact time we will arrive, for example. Mm -hmm. But we're saying it's around there. It's close. It's, it's almost that time or almost that age, but we're not 100% certain. So really, we're communicating a little bit of uncertainty when we do this. Yeah, that's right. Like, Cassie, I don't know exactly how old you are, but maybe I could say, oh, you must be like early 20s-ish, something like that. Exactly. That's right. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess the younger somebody is, the easier it is to guess their age. Yeah, especially without insulting them. <laughs> right. Uh, so that's a good point that you just brought up there, Cassie. You know, mm -hmm. in Western culture, it's kind of impolite to talk about people's age, right? When you first meet somebody, I know here in Korea where we live, you know, it's kind of common to say, oh, how old are you? Because there's... Mm -hmm. You know, a whole different cultural system that values age. But in Western culture, it can be really rude to ask somebody, how old are you? Especially if that person is older than you. Especially if they're women. Yeah, some women can be sensitive about this topic. Of course, everybody's different. Hmm. So this means that we often don't know how old people actually are, right? Mm -hmm. But we could guess. We could say, oh, how old do you think your professor is, Cassie? Uh, you know, he's like 50-ish. Right. 50-ish, <laughs> <laughs> right? So we can, we can do it like this. All right, why don't we take a listen to some example sentences right now? Let's meet around 5-ish. Uh, let's meet around 5-ish. So Cassie, if I said to you, Cassie, let's meet up around five-ish, what time would you arrive at the meeting place? This is what I really love about ish, actually. <laughs> I am always late. Okay. <laughs> so if people say, let's meet around five-ish, that makes me feel like I am allowed to be at least five or ten minutes late. Mm-hmm. Because it's not exactly five, right? It's five-ish. Yeah, I would say that it gives you maybe about a 10-minute window to be, to be late if you say let's meet at five-ish. If you say let's meet at five-ish and then you arrive at 5.30, I'll be a little angry. I would say, why didn't you say 5.30-ish, right? Because <laughs> mm -hmm. then you could have come at uh, 5.40 and it would have been okay, so... Yeah, it, when people add ish, I think they're accounting for about a 10-minute window of being late. Or early. So this is great. In, or early, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, a lot of people live in cities where the traffic is bad, and if you get stuck in traffic, you're going to be a little bit late. So this just gives you a little bit of an excuse for if you arrive late. It's, yes, it's great. You should use this every time you make plans. There will be many less arguments. I agree. Uh, let's listen to another example sentence. She must be around 60-ish. Mm, she must be around 60-ish. So again, this is just another example of how we can apply ish to an age to say that somebody is around that age, but we really don't know exactly how old they are. And our final example sentence with this usage pattern. I studied for three-ish hours or so. I studied for three-ish hours or so. We can also apply this for duration, right? For length. Mm -hmm. You could say, oh, I studied for three-ish hours. I lived there for five-ish years or so. And often when we're talking about duration, we add the or so to the end too, don't we? Mm-hmm. It means like it's not exactly that, but, you know, around there. Yeah, around there. Very good. All right, let's move on to the third way that we can use ish. And this is where things start to get a little more difficult because that is that there are 
some adjectives in English, not too many, but probably at least 50 or so, that have the ish suffix built right into the end of them. So it's a set word where English speakers were not adding ish to the adjective to change the quality. It's already a built-in part. It's a part of that word already. So I'm thinking of words like bookish, feverish, sluggish, ticklish, outlandish. Okay, these are all just adjectives that you could look up in the dictionary and find their meaning. And so what that ish suffix is communicating here is that you are like that thing or you are of that quality. So somebody that is bookish, Cassie, what is a bookish person like? Mm, somebody who is bookish is someone who, uh, you know, they're a little bit, I would say they're a little bit stuffy, like, um, you know, books are, books are great, but sometimes there's a stereotype that they're old and dusty and they're inside, you know, so someone who's bookish would be someone who studies a lot, stays inside, maybe is a little bit uptight. What about somebody who's feverish? So a fever, you know, is when you have a high temperature. So someone who is feverish would be someone who is either feeling like they have a fever or they're overly excited and kind of crazed like you feel when you have a fever. And I was complaining to you off air, Cassie, that today I feel a little bit sluggish because I had a bad sleep last night. So sluggish means that you just feel very tired and low energy, right? Because slugs are slow and <laughs> low energy insects. Right. So all of these words, then we can see that the ish suffix is communicating that they are kind of like that thing. A person that is bookish likes books and spends a lot of time with books. Somebody that's feverish is very passionate and is kind of like a hot fever. Somebody that is sluggish is kind of like a lazy slug, which is an insect that you often see moving very slowly through a vegetable garden, for example. So I, I'm sure if our listeners wanted to, to find a complete list of these adjectives, they could Google or, or use the dictionary. But that is just the third way that we can use ish is when it's built in to the word itself. And it's actually not a manipulation of the speaker to, to change the meaning of the word by adding ish. So I think, Cassie, we should read some example sentences so that our listeners can do some listen and repeat practice. How about that? Sounds great. He's been so standoffish since his girlfriend dumped him. He's been so standoffish since his girlfriend dumped him. So if you are standoffish, it means that you are confrontational and not very friendly and you know, that you kind of keep people at a distance. You're not too welcoming or open. Yeah, or you always want to pick pick a fight. Yeah, pick a fight, and you're just not a nice person, really, mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're standoffish. All right, the next example. I love her style. It's so boyish, but she really pulls it off. I love her style. It's so boyish, but she really pulls it off. Okay, so boyish. Boyish means like what a boy would wear. So this woman has a kind of boyish, a kind of tomboy style, but she looks really good wearing these types of clothes. Mm -hmm. Stopped acting so childish. You're 30 years old for crying out loud. Stop acting so childish. You're 30 years old for crying out loud. <laughs> this is a really common one, calling yeah. an adult childish. Right. Especially, I think, uh, when people are arguing, right? If mm -hmm. somebody's being immature, you can say, stop acting so childish. Grow up. 
I think I've used this once or twice, maybe on my sister or someone. <laughs> yes, me, me as well. And I think actually people have called me childish before. <laughs> Probably that's even more common. <laughs> All right. So we have one more way that we can use ish that we are going to look at today. And Cassie, I think this is maybe the most difficult way that English native speakers use ish. And that is that we can attach it to adjectives when we want to downplay the quality of that adjective and, and say that it's only a little bit like that thing or kind of like that thing. And here the way that we pronounce the words is really, really important. When we add ish to an adjective in this way, we have a little pause, a little delay, and we also change the intonation pattern of our speech. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can hear like when we say childish, bookish, feverish, it's a very smooth pronunciation, right? Yeah, it flows nice. It flows. There's no delay between book and ish. It's just bookish. It's very natural. But if I want to apply ish to a different adjective, okay, so maybe I want to use cheap. Let's use cheap for an example. I don't say cheapish. I say, oh, it's cheap-ish. Can you hear that delay? It's cheap-ish. I don't say it's cheapish. It's cheap-ish. There's just a slight delay there. And I think that's really an important feature of this final usage pattern. I think also listeners should realize when we have the more smooth, like bookish, the I is very soft, just eh. But when we do it with this pattern, like cheap-ish, the I is very harsh, eh, cheap-ish. Cheap-ish, yeah, the, it's more pronounced, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is, that's a great point. And I think maybe what we should do here is just get right to some examples so that we can actually let our listeners hear what we're talking about. And then we can explain and pick apart each example sentence and give more details in the context of those examples. And listeners, remember to speak along with us, okay? So I'll say the sentence, Cassie will say the sentence, and then it's your turn to talk. Here we go. He's smart-ish, but I don't think he has what it takes to study at Harvard. He is smart-ish, but I don't think he has what it takes to study at Harvard. This is almost like an insult, right, Cassie? <laughs> yes. If somebody told me, oh, Andrew, you're smart-ish, then I, I kind of assume that they think I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's like almost, this is a good form of sarcasm, mm. almost, yeah. Yeah, he's a little bit smart, but he's no genius, right? Yeah. He can't go to Harvard. Let's take a listen to example sentence number two. She's pretty-ish, but she'll have to lose weight to become a fashion model. She's pretty-ish, but she'll have to lose weight to become a fashion model. Ugh, I felt, like, kind of dirty just saying that. It's such a <laughs> mean thing to say. <laughs> it's a very mean thing to say. That's a good point. I really feel like with these two example sentences, the speaker is speaking behind the back of somebody. So this is maybe something that you would hear somebody say when they're gossiping, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't really say this very often to somebody's face, would you? No, because like you said before, it's kind of insulting. Mm -hmm. And let's listen to one more example. And this one is not offensive, so that's good. <laughs> let's take a listen. <laughs> This restaurant is expensive-ish, but I've been wanting to go forever. Is it okay if we check it out? This restaurant is expensive-ish, but I've been wanting to go forever. Is it okay if we uh, check it out? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so here the speaker modified expensive by adding ish to the end of it to say that, you know, the restaurant is expensive, but it's not really, really, really expensive. It won't break the bank. It won't make you like spend a good chunk of your paycheck, but it's not, you know, like going to a ramen place or to a <laughs> burger joint. Yeah, it's, it's more expensive than the typical restaurant, right? It's expensive-ish. So this is another way that we can modify what an adjective means to mean, you know, we're downplaying the quality, right? When we say somebody is smart-ish, it means they're not really smart. If she's pretty-ish, she's not really pretty. If it's expensive-ish, it's expensive, but it's not really expensive. Cassie, I have one final question for you. Yes. And that is, do you think we could apply ish to any adjective? Or are there some exceptions that you could think of? That's a difficult question off the top of your head. <laughs> you know, especially with this last use of ish, these are not real words, right? Like you said, the the third use of ish can be found in the dictionary, bookish, standoffish. But this fourth one, I'm pretty sure you could use it with anything, even if it's even if it's the first time anyone has ever used it in that way. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a creative use of language. So um, yeah, we could probably use it with almost any adjective that's out there. Whether your listener understands what you mean or, or not <laughs> might depend on how creative it is. But that's one of the beautiful things about English is we can be really flexible with yeah. uh, with our language and you know English speakers are always making up new words and new verbs and coining new terms. Uh, and uh, honestly, I think this happens in every language, but this is just one example of how we can do this in English. Maybe our listeners could uh, test it out. They could try to make some new English words using ish and see how it goes. Yeah, hey, they could even send us an email and see if we can understand them. That's an excellent idea. I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. <laughs> so if you guys want to get in touch with us, all you have to do is send us an email to contact at qlips.com. Of course, we would also love it if you sent us a topic for an upcoming episode just like Vera did for today's episode and thank you again Vera for the email if you'd like to follow us on social media we are on Facebook Instagram YouTube and Twitter just search for the Culips English podcast and you can find us that way and finally guys don't forget about the study guide for this episode it's jam-packed with a lot of materials that we've designed to help you improve your English and it can be downloaded from our website, qlips.com. That's it for us. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode and we'll talk to you then. Goodbye. See you later.